Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our presentation, updates on the 2021 Connecticut SAT School Day. I want to thank everybody for attending. I know that this is a real busy time for all of you, um, but we appreciate that you're able to take some time to get some of the updates that we have for you. Um, just a few reminders before we do introductions, but um, just as a reminder for those of you on the call, you are all on mute. However, you can ask questions a couple of different ways. You can type them into the question box or you can use the raise your hand feature and we will call on you and you will unmute your microphone and ask your question out loud. Um, we're planning on having about 15 minutes at the end for questions. But if we don't get to your question and you've asked it in the question box, we will be able to email you a response to that. Just as a reminder, this session is being recorded and it will be posted to the Connecticut SAT School Day website, as well as the Performance Matters Forum webinar series pages. Closed captioning is also available. And if you look in the chat box, you can access closed captioning by clicking on the website that's listed in the chat. Additionally, handouts from the session are available to download in the handouts section of your control panel. Okay, so um, my name is Michelle Rosado and I work at the Connecticut State Department of Education um, on the Connecticut SAT School Day. I'm joined with my, by my colleague, Deirdre. Deirdre, could you introduce yourself? Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Deirdre Ducharme with the Performance Office. And it's a pleasure to be with you here this afternoon. I'm also joined by my colleagues at the College Board. Adrian. Hi, everybody. I'm Adrienne Cupper, uh, and I work uh, at the College Board, and I support the Connecticut State implementation. And I'll introduce myself. I'm Alan Bernstein. I work with Adrian. So I've been with the College Board 11 years, and my role is primarily to work with uh, schools and districts in terms of implementation and other um, rollouts of, of SAT and of AP and other College Board products. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Keisha Smith. Unfortunately, my web camera is not working today, but I'm glad to join everyone. I am from the uh, SSD Department Services for Students with Disabilities. Specifically, I oversee um, accommodations process for our state contracts. Great, thank you. Thank you all for joining us. It's nice to be able to have um, such a bunch of experts on this that we can all provide the answers to the questions that you might have. So just as a reminder, we're gonna give some overview on some of the changes between the 2020 administration which never happened. So I think it's good to do some refreshers. Um, and then also we're gonna let's talk a little bit about accommodations and how to enter those. There's been some changes with the College Board's SSD online system. All right, so what's new? Okay, just as a reminder that we have announced the dates for the 2021 Connecticut SAT School Day. And um, all test coordinators were emails, and all schools have chosen their respective primary test date of either March 24th or April 13th. And um, everyone will be using the makeup days of the 27th or the 28th. You'd use both days if you need them. Um, and additionally, we're following the accommodated testing window where students using a blue test booklet, and um, Deirdre will talk about the different kinds of accommodations later, but those students have test during a two week window, beginning with your primary test administration with, and two weeks following, and you can see those dates there. So as I mentioned, everyone has already chosen their dates. If for some reason, whether has your school closed on your primary test date, you will use the makeup dates as your test dates. Additionally, I know that um, the landscape is changing every day in terms of COVID. Um, at right now, the test is going on. There are no waivers. It's mandatory for your grade 11 students in public school. However, we will certainly be constantly, we'll be in the loop with you, letting you know if there's any updates that 
to make this uh, change. But for now, it's a go and we're moving forward with all of our planning and working with you to make sure that this is a, a successful administration for your students. So um, some of the names have changed for the way um, certain accommodations are referred to, and you can see that those are on here. Um, I'm not gonna spend too much time on this because I know that Deirdre is going to talk about it um, in her uh, part of the presentation. Um, just as a reminder, um, oh, well, this is, this is something that would have happened in 2020, but since we didn't administer it, um, there are fewer fields that the students need to fill in um, on their answer sheet if they have a pre-ID label. Um, we got a lot of feedback asking why if they have a label that they need to bubble in any information at all. And it's just to make sure that um, if the label falls off the book or there's something incorrect with the label, we have another way of matching the students. So. Um, if they don't have a pre-ID label, they will need to complete the fields just on the front of the answer sheet. So we don't have students complete things like their mailing address and some of the additional fields that are inside the answer sheet. Just the front cover and then the score sends and then on test day, there's information on the back cover. Okay, uh, this is something that would have been new this year if we had had the tests, but um, Right now, um, so this year in 2021, coordinators are going to schedule their own UPS uh, pickup for materials. Um, if you're if the UPS driver ordinarily comes to your school on a regular basis, you can just give the um, driver the materials. You of course want to get a receipt. Um, you can also schedule a pickup online. Um, that is fine too. You just want to make sure that you get a receipt for that. Um, this is a new resource that College Board um, introduced, I want to say it was in the spring, and Adrian or Alan, you guys can jump in about this one, um, the question bank. Actually, maybe Adrian or Alan, can you maybe give a little bit of detail on this one? Sure, I'm happy to jump in. So, um, so we put together this resource to support educators um, Either uh, you can you can use it as a practice resource for educators uh, or for, for students, or you can use it um, after the test and after you see areas that students need to work on, you have some additional uh, support questions to be able to uh, work with those students. But basically, this SAT suite of assessments question bank is um, is a tool where an educator can go in, can answer some questions about what you're looking for and the kind of questions you're looking for, and create a um, a targeted question set that you can use to improve instruction with your students. Um, and so there's about 3,500 questions available in the question bank. Um, you, like I said, you go through the question bank and you answer some questions about what you're looking for. If you're looking for math questions, you state that. Then you can look at, uh, you can, you know, are you looking for math questions that focus on the heart of algebra uh, and, and really kind of continue to drill down and get questions that support what you're trying to do with your student. Um, the uh, these questions come from the uh, the SAT, PSAT, and MSQT, PSAT 10, and PSAT 8.9. So you have the opportunity to choose uh, choose different um, different types of questions. And uh, and like I said, you'll be able to access the questions and the answers with some explanations um, and and use those with your students. Thanks, Adrian. Uh, Adrian, since you're on right now, there was a question about can they take their test materials to UPS themselves? Uh, you can. Uh, you, you've got to, uh, if, if you don't have UPS coming to your school, you can take them to UPS, UPS yourself. You do want to make sure that you're going directly to UPS, uh, that you are not making a stop off somewhere, that there's not some issue or potential problem where a, a test a test materials could be lost. Um, but you could, if uh, with the scan, with the label, uh, you, you could drop it off at a UPS store. Make sure you get a receipt when you drop it off. Thanks. Okay, I mentioned briefly that there is that extended window for students using the blue test booklet. So there's certain accommodations that require a blue test booklet. 
and any of those students will test during the accommodated window. The um, standard test booklet purple students, um, if they are using that booklet, they will not, they will test on the makeup day. So um, when you print out your NAR, your roster, which um, we'll talk about that kind of that roster later, but um, that's where you'd be able to see what grouping they fall in. So just as a reminder, when you get your materials, you want to hold on to um, the materials that the students would need for that accommodated window. Um, it's the other materials that would get sent back because you're going to be using a different testing form when you do the makeup testing for your standard testers. And just as a reminder to everyone on the call, if you're a new coordinator or you just weren't 100% sure because we had changed our policy a couple of years ago, uh, we only allow grade 11 students who are listed in PSIS as grade 11 to take the Connecticut SAT school day. Those are the only students that the state registers through the college board to take that test. Um, so no other grades will be permitted to take the test. and Additionally, for accountability, if you have a student repeating grade 11, they actually would need to take the test again. So anyone in grade 11 in PSIS. And since this is different from what you've just experienced during the fall administration for your grade 12 students, if you actually did test them during school day, um, you don't need to order materials for the Connecticut SAT school day. Um, the materials are ordered for you um, based on quantities of students in PSIS, as well as students that are approved for accommodations through the SSD. And registration again, we will, the state will take care of doing that. We submit a file that we pull out from PSIS at the end of January and labels are created for your students. So you want to make sure that you're working with your PSIS coordinator to make sure that the information is up to date for students moving in and out, students changing grades, et cetera, because of credits. Um, so really important to make sure you have an accurate list. And we will continue to register your students that come in, in, in your schools through the end of the through the end of April prior to the makeup testing window. Um, we won't be able to produce labels for students that come in after we have the file sent at the end of January, but we will still register your students. So as I said, it's very important to maintain that updated list of grade 11 students. Okay. So rosters, once again, you're gonna create your own roster for students taking the standard Connecticut SAT school day. And then the non-standard report, which Deirdre will talk about later on, that is available for you for students approved in SSD about four weeks prior to your um, primary test date. Just as a reminder, you, if you have anything that happens during test day that's not, um, that's an irregularity, that's something strange happened, too much time, not enough time, um, things like that, student, student answered in the wrong part of the test booklet, you wanna contact the college board and they can arrange for a makeup with you, et cetera. So you wanna make sure all of that is reported. Okay, so all students are required to take the Connecticut SAT school day. And if they miss the, the primary test date, they have to take it on the 27th or the 28th. And this is actually the only time you do need to request materials. There is a, um, Adrian, maybe you can jump in because I'm not sure if that changed last year, the way we were gonna capture this information. It usually was an email I sent with the survey link, but I yes, can't remember. It'll be the same again for this year. What'll happen is uh, on uh, just before test day, 
um, all test coordinators will get an email um, that provides information about ordering makeup materials. And what will happen is you click on the link that's in that email after you've completed your testing on test day uh, and you provide us with uh, information about absentees um, so that you can get testing materials for those students or if you had testing irregularities um, you'll give us some information about that and we'll help you to determine if you need to order materials for those students as well um, what will happen is your you'll have your test day plus two days after your test day to place those orders. Um, so for the for for those of you who are testing on March 24th, you can place your makeup orders March 24th, 25th, or 26th. And for those of you testing on April 13th, you can place your makeup orders on April 13th, 14th, or 15th. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Can I hear some dates? approximate dates on when you'll be getting your materials for testing in the spring and it is important to make note that the shipments um, come in multiple boxes so you might re receive those boxes on different days so however if we're getting close to testing and you haven't gotten your materials we do want you to reach out as soon as possible because sometimes things can get delivered to the wrong place and or oftentimes what happens is someone signs for the materials doesn't tell you and they get put somewhere else in the school so we can let you know if they were signed for if they were delivered and things like that so don't hesitate to reach out if you have any concerns or questions and here's some more of the key dates we'll have some kind of training I think I'm going to mention that in a next next slide or something like that so the accommodations window is opening up soon um Deirdre will talk about that the coordinator training we normally have an in-person training for all coordinators that happens in February I think it was towards the end of February um, we're planning on doing a virtual training of some sort. We probably will have multiple times and dates for you to choose from. And I'll get that information out to coordinators as soon as we have that set up. Um, a great resource that we have posted on our website right now is the Test Coordinator Implementation Handbook. It's, all, it's a short document, um, a really good read, especially if you're a new coordinator has a lot of the information that you want to know about right now at your fingertips, the dates and things like that. Um, and so that is posted right now. And there's a reminder about those who have children taking the SAT as to whether they can proctor. Yes, they can. They can be a monitor, a monitor. They just can't handle the test materials prior to the test day. Um, I know this is about SAT, but I'm sure that many of you also serve in the role of AP coordinator for your buildings or for your district. I just wanted to give you a reminder that once again, the Connecticut State Department of Education will cover the remainder of the cost for the 2021 AP test for students from low income families. So that will give students a cost of zero. So they are at no cost for students from low income families. Um, I want to make sure that you're indicating on your AP site order that these tests are for students who get a fee waiver. Um, another reminder as well, we're approaching the deadline to order materials for AP November 13th. And a change in policy this year is noted in the last dot point. There still is a late fee to order. It's better for students to register on time and cancel later because there is no fee for exams that are canceled or indicated as unused and that's that's specific to, to, to 2021. Okay and I want to just close it out on my part just letting you know that we are moving to digital for the 2022 SAT school day. Um, we're going to be sharing the test windows with school districts very soon. And we will also be providing training for you. Um, College Board uses the same platform that is, has been used by the Smarter Balance. Um, so they use Cambium assessment. 
And so I'm sure there's a lot of similar things for those of you that administer the science test in your buildings. I have a quick poll that I want to have you take so we can get a sense of what um, school buildings feel would be the best choice of dates for the 2022 digital. Um, there, there will be, um, I'm asking you to pick two choices from the three that are available. And um, we, I would appreciate you voting on this. Let me just launch the poll. Okay, go ahead and take a vote. I'd like you to pick two different ones. I'm gonna leave it open for a couple of seconds. I'm gonna stop talking. Remember to choose two options, please. All right, a couple more seconds and I'm gonna close it. Okay, there's the results that we have. So it looks like people are in favor of the March dates and the late April date. Um, and as I said, we will be in touch with you um, about our um, about the dates that are chosen. And thank you for helping us with this. All right, Deirdre, I'm going to hand it over to you. For those of you that have a hand raised, we're going to wait and take the questions at the end. Um, I hope that's okay. You can keep that hand up there in that question box. Um, keep typing them in there. Thank you. Welcome all of our school coordinators as well as our seasoned SSD coordinators and potentially new SSD coordinators. I'm going to walk you through the process for supporting your students with IEPs and 504 plans, as well as your English learners, as far as preparing them for the upcoming Connecticut SAT school day and the responsibilities that you are involved with as far as preparing these students for the accommodations that are, um, that are available to them based on their documents, their, their documented 504 and IEP plans. So I always like to start off our discussion regarding accommodations by providing the, the foundation for how accommodations support our students in the context of standardized assessments. So just to preface and as a reminder that accommodations are changes in procedures or materials that increase equitable access during assessments and they are available for those students where there is a documented need. So students with an active 504 or IEP are eligible to receive accommodations on the Connecticut SAT school day. The student's IEP or 504 plan must specify the accommodations that will be used during testing. And these accommodations should generally reflect the types of accommodations that your students are receiving during instruction, as well as on other statewide assessments and benchmark assessments in school. If you have new students to your high school who will be participating in the upcoming Connecticut SAT school day, or if you have students who have pre-existing IEPs or in need for changes, we want to encourage the participation at the IEP, the planning and placement team meeting, and that the discussions do involve a parent or guardian, at least one teacher and school administrator, and the student. We, we certainly encourage student, student participation so that the students know what how the accommodations work in the context of the SAT school day and how these accommodations um, interact with a time test that is also administered through paper pencil, at least paper pencil for most of our students. You're now looking at a, 
at page nine of the student's IEP. And for your students who do have IEPs, this is always a good starting place. As you're gearing up for the upcoming administration, we want to make sure that the students are identified as being eligible to participate in the Connecticut SAT School Day, as well as the Next Generation Science Standard Assessment. First, very small subgroup of your student population. You may have students that are identified as being participants for the Connecticut Alternate Assessment. So just keep in mind that some students may not, in fact, be taking the SAT school day. You're also going to want to pay attention to page eight of the student's IEP. And this page is critical when you're meeting with your planning and placement team because it allows it allows you to specify the specific accommodations and supports that your students are eligible for based on their presenting disability. Michelle, can you can you move to the next slide, please? Thank you. So it's critical that this page be as explicit as possible as far as identifying what those accommodations are and how the students will be using them. So for example, to just nearly see extended time or breaks really doesn't give the teacher or the test administrator or an SSD coordinator a lot of information about what the student's explicit needs are and how that accommodation should be documented through SSD online. So I always encourage our administrators and our special ed directors to be as, ex as explicit as possible on this page. So there's never a question about what accommodation the student needs nor how it should be delivered at the time of testing. Next slide. The SSD coordinator is the key person in your high school who's going to coordinate your activities around accommodations. Typically, there is one SSD coordinator per high school. And while there is the key coordinator, you can allow other individuals to serve in a similar capacity, but um, essentially there will be one person who's going to oversee the whole process. The SSD coordinators collect the collection, the submission, and the delivery of accommodations on the Connecticut SAT school day. These individuals serve as a liaison between their students, their school, the college board, and any kind of partnership or collaboration you need with the Department of Education. Primarily, I work in that capacity to support your work. Our SSD coordinators will receive an access code to SSD online. So if you're a seasoned SSD coordinator, you already have access. If you are a new SSD coordinator for this current school year and you haven't already created an account, in the next slide, I'll show you the steps you'll need so that you can create an account and work in the capacity as SSD coordinator. It's also important to note that for the purposes of the upcoming Connecticut SAT school day, we have a specific accommodation window in which you're going to make any changes to existing accommodations or add new accommodations for students who might be new to your high school. You're also going to use the SSD online to document any time extension, 50%, for your English learners who are eligible for this kind of extended time. So again, this, the, the extend, time extension for ELs does get documented and approved using the same SSD system used for your students with disabilities. Next slide, please. In preparation for testing, our SSD coordinators will use SSD online to generate the non-standard administration report, otherwise known as the NAR. This is the report that's going to give you a list of all of your students who are approved and eligible for accommodations. And it will also specify the test booklet that your student will be using based on approved accommodations. So your student might be using the blue test booklet, which is specific for uh, two-day testers, students who are, or students who are eligible to test within the accommodated two-week window, or some students who are eligible and approved for accommodations will be using the standard purple test booklets, the same booklet as their, their non-disabled peers. 
So the non-standard administration report is going to give you that information. And it's also going to allow you to prepare your coordinators and the staff for the delivery on test day. So to be able to create your test environments, your testing rooms, the staff, and ensure that you have the accommodations in place for those students who need them. You'll also use the non-standard report to add any students who might um, be, be latecomers to this, uh, the, student pro the uh, student roster process. We do on occasion have kids who move into your, your high school, you know, after the accommodation window, maybe they're not on, on the list and you have to add them. So again, the NAR is going to be one of the critical documents that you and your other SSD coordinators use to support our students using accommodations for testing. Uh, the NAR will also include your English learners who are eligible for 50% extended time. If you're a new SSD coordinator, you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to the link that's included on this slide. And it is hyperlinked. You can um, access it when you're using your resources, or you can simply go to the College Board's website. The SSD Online provides an application for you to create an account. So if you are a new SSD coordinator, I recommend that you create an account as soon as possible. It is important that you have depending what program you represent, that you have um, a, an AI code, which all of our high school programs have, but perhaps if you're representing a new uh, special education program or a new school, you wanna make sure that you work with the CSD and the College Board to establish an AI code. Once that AI code is in place, you will then be able to register, your, register yourself as an SSD coordinator. Usually it takes about two to three days for the College Board to process this request and to give you the authorization so that you have access to SSD. Again, you're gonna want it to, to co complete these steps before the accommodated window begins or opens on no November 24th so that you have access to submitting these accommodations during that window. Adrian. Uh, hi, Deirdre. I just wanted to jump in uh, regarding the AI code. If your school does not have an AI code, um, we will. We are working to establish them, and we should have those established for you sometime in the December timeframe. And so, um, and so, if we will, we will let you know when your when your AI code is available. Um, so, just wanted to give you a heads up on that. All right. Great. Thank you. The College Board has created some new enhancements to the SSD online. And so in partnership with our SSD coordinators in Connecticut, as well as nationally, the College Board has worked to improve the look of SSD online. So as a user, you'll find that it has a modern streamlined user experience, that the dashboard is user friendly with improved filtering and access to student information, and there's a simplified accommodation request process. The SSD online will look different, but there won't be any changes to accessing the system, how your accommodations are reviewed, or the deadlines to submit requests. So the College Board is pleased to debut this new online SSD system in December. So stay tuned, We'd be we will be happy to provide you a demo of this updated system. Adrian? Oh, Adrian, you're muted. Sorry, just a little bit of information here on what you're seeing on the screen. So what you're seeing on the screen is kind of a mock-up of what the new dashboard is going will, will, will look like. Um, there are going to be some changes to text and whatnot. So just give you a sense that this is not exactly what it's going to look like, but you can see that the look and feel is a little bit different. Um, and uh, when we do the demo, we'll show you that the dashboard will operate a little bit more, a little bit differently. Um, and so we'll walk you through all of that. But this, this is this screenshot's meant to give you kind of a, a sense of the look and feel and some of the differences. Although please know there will be some additional changes kind of coming. So by the time we talk to each other again in December, uh, there will be um, there there will be everything will be finalized the system will be launched and then we'll really go through the, the, the functionality there great thank you 
we will do an in-depth walkthrough of accommodation submission process at a later date. Usually we host a similar kind of webinar specific to accommodations in the SSD system, so stay tuned. But for right now, I'm gonna walk you through some of the key functions for our SSD coordinators. So it's November, the accommodation window is going to be opening soon. What do you need to do now? I recommend that you begin by reviewing the accommodations for your existing 11th grade students. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have access to their files, whether it's the 504 plan, the IEP, the English learner plan, et cetera. You'll, you'll want access to your student information. But review the supports and accommodations for your existing 11th graders. Students with approved accommodations through their college board from previous years require no action unless there are changes that um, are, are were newly made. So if at any point you have to remove an accommodation or add an accommodation, then you'll wanna make sure that you identify uh, the students in which those changes should be made. The test materials will be shipped to the schools for students with accommodations based on the test materials that are needed. So based on the accommodations approved in SSD, materials will be generated. So if you have a student who needs braille material or large print, et cetera, those materials will be automatically generated based on SSD approvals. If you have pending status for any of your students, um, either during the accommodated window uh, or after the accommodation window closes and you're waiting for approval or if you have a denial or need information, certainly use the SSD customer service as well as me as a support. My colleague Keisha Smith with the College Board is on this call and she's um, she's an incredible partner to me as well as to all of you on behalf of your students with accommodation. So if you have questions about the status of a particular for a particular student and you need more information about it, if you have questions, certainly reach out to me and Keisha is my my partner in making sure that your students have everything they need at the time of testing. Deirdre, I just wanted to just share one thing with the group. I know there will be another opportunity that will be specifically dedicated to SSD at, at a later date, but what I wanted to share was you gave the example of Braille, which I think is a great example for the group. Uh, just be aware that when we mention um, where test materials being automatically shipped, if the student is requesting for anything from 20 point and under, that's automatically shipped. But what you should be aware of in cases where you have students with visual impairments requiring a larger print, we do ask that you submit um, those requests earlier on because sometimes it can take a few weeks in order for those particular materials, the larger print, larger than 20 point, to be created. So I just wanted to just prepare everyone for that in advance because we certainly want to be able to provide um, ma the appropriate materials in cases where a student would require larger than 20. So it's just a, something to be aware of in advance and we can mention that at another during another training, but you know, sometimes, excuse me, that there are scenarios where a student may require larger than 20 points. Great, thank you, Keisha. And you know, I think that's a good, that's a, it's an important connection with many of our accommodations um, that impact testing. So we encourage you to submit those accommodations or any changes as early in that testing, that accommodation window as possible. Because what happens is as we receive late accommodations, the closer to the primary test day we get, um, there can be the potential that, the, that we're unable to provide you with those specific materials on test day. So if it's a student, if, if it's for a student who can test within that accommodated, that two week accommodated window, then certainly we have time to work with, but 
again, just to make sure that our students have the accommodated materials that they need, that everything's in place well in advance to testing, we encourage you to try and get those accommodations in within that test window. As you see on the slide right here, these are, this is a list of the most common accommodations that are offered by the College Board. And it's not an exhaustive list, but you'll see that a number of these accommodations support students who need access to print or perhaps access to recording their responses. Again, given that this is a paper pencil assessment. Because the SAT is a time test, we know that some students need a little more flexibility as far as the length of time provided during testing. So some of our students with disabilities benefit from extended time, whether that's time and a half or double time. But then, you know, there are some parameters as far as what the administration and delivery looks like for extended time. So that might not be the best alternative or solution for some of our students. And as an alternative, some of our 11th graders benefit from having extended breaks or maybe breaks on demand. And so we have materials and some slides that are coming up that will delineate between how the time extension and extended breaks works based on the student needs. Next slide, please. There are some important considerations when determining time for time extension. So first, I recommend that you determine the need of the student and in terms of cognitive or physical load in completing a standardized time test. Think or you know, ask work as you're working with your student, ask the student whether this accommodation, is this an accommodation that is used on a regular basis? Does it make a difference for your students? There are two options for extended time, time and a half, 50%, or double time, which is 100%. Double time may require the testing across or over two days. So think about what impact this may have on the students. The student, you, you know, as you're working out these issues with your tester, you'll wanna determine if the time extension is needed for evidence-based reading writing, math, all three subtests, or just mathematics. And so you'll want to, again, determine what options are most appropriate for the students. Some students with extended time are tested separately from those taking the assessment using standard time. It's important to remember that students must remain in the room for the entire designated extended time. So think about the impact that this might have on your students, especially for those students who may encounter anxiety or frustration due to their disability or their specific needs. And also consider students that leave early from their extended test time will not have their test scored. So there are ramifications for those students who do not follow the procedures according to the specifications for time extension. Students approved for time extension will automatically receive extra breaks. So there is no need to request a separate accommodation. And finally, indicating more than 100% testing over multiple days will require additional information in SSD online for further review. And so I do have colleagues out in the field who work um, in specialized programs where maybe there are transportation issues specific for um, you know, student drop-offs that vary. So the student starting times that vary from the standard student population, or there might be medical needs that would require a student to have a, a very unique individualized test session set up where a student might test more than 100%. But again, in, in these situations, typically you're working directly with me and the college board to make sure that we are approving, the, uh, setting up the most appropriate uh, test setting and, and, and time extension for that student. 
this slide here is a sort of a cheat sheet, and we have a handful of these coming up that identify the accommodation. It specifies the number of days uh, typically that are required to complete the assessment, as well as things to know about the delivery of the accommodation. So this is a good cheat sheet for the differences between extended time for our reading, writing, and math versus math only. Um, and again, a reminder that students will automatically receive extended breaks for the time extension. Next slide, please. There are a variety of accommodations available to students who need access to reading or seeing the text, such as a human reader, the provision of Braille, or the pre-recorded audio MP3. And if you remember last year, we rolled out information as to how the MP3 was going to um, operate moving forward. At one point, we provided you with access to a flash drive. Now the delivery of our MP3 is it's audio streamed. And so we had some very specific um, preparatory steps that you'll follow for those students who will be accessing their SAT through the pre-recorded MP3. Next slide, please. So instead of shipping a flash drive to, to your school, the pre-recorded audio files are available to download through SSD online. Although the streaming option is designed to enhance the testing experience and ensure test security, there's some things that you'll need to do in advance. So prior to test day, an application needs to be installed and tested on the computer for which the MP3 audio is being tested. If you've already installed the application for the fall college board testing, there's nothing that you need to reinstall. You're essentially all set. You'll, you'll use the same application. Otherwise, you'll, you'll download the, um, the SSD, um, you'll download the MP3 audio through your SSD online, and you're gonna wanna test the application to ensure that it works prior to test day. We recommend that our SSD coordinators review the functionality of the streaming application by accessing a sample prior to test day. And this will ensure that everything is working accordingly for your student. On the day of test day, you'll download the audio file. More information and instructions are available on the MP3 streaming application process page in SSD online. Okay, this slide here, again, cheat sheet, it gives you a little bit more information about what you need to know about the the differences between the MP3 audio streaming and the human reader. Um, the takeaway is that a human reader does require a one-to-one -one test setting, and you'll have to have a trained proctor available to provide that human reader experience. So again, think about what the specific needs are of your students, as well as the staff availability and capacity to meet the specifications for the human reader versus the pre-recorded audio. Next slide, please. Here is a list of accommodations that we have to support our students who need assistance with recording their answers. So some of our students are eligible to receive a writer or a scribe accommodation. And for our seen impaired students, we do offer the enlarged answer sheet and then for some seeing impaired students, we do offer Braille support. So if you have any specific questions about the Braille writer or Braille material, again, you can reach out to the SSD customer service or you can contact our office. We've already talked about time extension. I mentioned that we have options for students who might benefit from extended breaks. And so really the best way to look at this is that our, our extended time is time on the clock. So the clock is running and it's a very prescribed, uh, prescribed set of time that is followed based on what the students approve for in the script in this, the, the test coordinator manuals. With the extended time and extended breaks, 
this allows the student to essentially have the, the clock stop momentarily so that he or she can have their, their individual needs met. So I think extended breaks are certainly beneficial for those students who can't sit for like a full day or two days time period, kids who perhaps need to attend to medical issues such as um, having a snack or a water break or taking medication, there, there may be, you know, the, the list of needs is, you know, is, is quite extensive. So some of these students certainly benefit from having their needs met in a time test session by receiving extended breaks or breaks as needed. So this cheat sheet here delineates between how the differences between extra breaks and extended breaks and what that looks like. And again, the script is explicit. The, the script that your test examiners are using based on the combination approved is very specific as far as how long, when those breaks occur in between test sessions and how long they are. Some of our students benefit from testing in a small group session or one-on-one. -on -one. A one-on-one -on -one may be required based on the accommodation that they're reading, such as receiving a reader or a scribe, or again, um, based on the student's disability, he or she may need to be in a one-on-one -on -one test setting. And a small subset of our students will be taking the Connecticut SAT school day um, using uh, or from, from a homebound or hospital situation. Next slide, please. And um, again, we have specific guidelines as far as how students will receive their accommodations if they need to test their blood sugar or take food and medication. These again are things that are requested through SSD. Next slide, please. Here's a cheat sheet that again specifies some of the details about the delivery of these accommodations for Braille, ASL, and assistive technology. Next slide. If you have a situation where a student requires an accommodation that's not supported by the SSD online, or you need something that's customized, we have a process in which you can work through, you can work with our office um, using a special documented accommodation process. So please email me if you have any really specific unique needs as far as accommodations for your kids. Next slide, please. Okay, we can't forget our English learners, and I'm going to be quick because I want to make sure that we have time for questions, but our English learners have a variety of supports that are available to them. Certainly, they can receive 50% extended time if they're eligible. That gets entered through SSD during the month of January. We'll let you know when the window opens. Students who are English learners are also eligible for translated test directions. They can have the test directions read to them in their native language if you have a staff member who's trained and can speak that language. We also have word -to -word a list of word-to-word -word bilingual dictionaries available on our website, the Connecticut SAT School Day page. We have links in which these resources can be downloaded and made available to your English learners at the time of test. The College Board has um, brochures as well that will outline step-by-step -step how to enter that information in the SSD. If you have students who are eligible for the alternate assessments, just let your teachers, the, the teachers administering the alternate assessments know that the training is available online through the uh, Connecticut uh, Connecticut Assessment Program Portal. Eligibility is based on the completion of this form. The Connecticut Alternate Assessment Eligibility Form it can be entered through our data entry interface. This information is disseminated to our special ed directors and our teachers who administer alternate assessments. Next slide, please. This is a timeline for submitting the alternate assessment eligibility forms. The window opens on November 12th. Next slide, please. And here is a list of resources. So anything you need to know about accommodations related to SAT, NGSS, alternate assessments, et cetera, is available through the assessment guidelines. And then we'll be, we've included EL supports and the College Board 
uh, modules and training that will help support you in your work. Next slide. Here's our contact information. Please let us know if you have any specific questions along the way. We're happy to support you and we wish you a great planning time and um, test administration ahead. Thank you. Michelle, you're muted. Thank you. I've fallen victim to not unmuting myself. All right, so Alan, Adrian, Deirdre, Keisha, I think we, I know we have a few questions in our, in the question box, and I believe there might be someone with their hand raised. So, um, let's see, how, when we get to digital, how will the 50% extra time or the time and a half be accommodated? Um, so I'm going to start with a little bit of information that I have, and I'm not 100% sure this will answer the question that you're asking, but we'll see. So, um, in in the digital uh, in the digital system, if your student has 50% uh, or 100, you know, the time and a half um, as part of their accommodations, and you can um, you you provide that information to us, you, you would just just like you do a standard um, a standard request for that accommodation, and then what will happen is in your um when the student takes the test um they'll be essentially provisioned for a test for the exact amount of time that extra time um so they will still be able to take it digitally they'll just have a different timing i'm hoping that answers the question okay thanks and just to let everybody know well you know as we get more details we'll provide them to you um we're not the first state doing digital i know there are other states and also other school districts around the country that have done digital. Um, I don't know, Adrian, if you know or Alan knows exactly. I think it's Arizona, but I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, um, New Mexico has done it. Um, there's been we have Ohio doing it. We have a, a couple states in New Hampshire. So um, there's there's been a number of states that have done it. Okay, um, we have a couple of hands raised, so I'm going to attempt to Jessica Gillespie, are you there? Can you unmute yourself and ask your question? Jessica? I, I actually hit the hand raise button by accident. I oh, tried. Well, nice to talk to you. All right. <laughs> um, let's see. I don't know if this will be the same case here for this person, but Cynthia Bryan. Do you have a question? Do you want to unmute yourself? Okay, maybe not. I think there's a few more questions in the question box. If okay, so is a what is the webinar being recorded? It is being recorded and it will be posted to the SAT website as well as the Performance Matters um, forum page. So, if a student is approved for reader, writer, scribe, can a reader also be the writer scribe for the student? Yes, they can serve the, the same role. Um, just be mindful that um, something to point out that was not asked is that for the reader and for the scribe, they are both going to serve for the entire test. So for the reader has to read the entire test to the student, not designated sections, and the scribe will scribe the test for the, um, including bubbling answers for the student. So that's for the entire exam. So it's just something to be mindful of, but just going back to your original question, they can serve the dual role, yes. You're muted, Michelle. Sorry. Um, there was a question about advanced placement and students that qualify for a fee waiver. Um, and I might have just ask Alan just to clarify, but I believe they have to just indicate in the their dashboard that they qualify for the fee waiver and then they won't be charged. Is that correct, Alan? 
Right. So in the uh, the AP registration portal, next to the student's name, it asks uh, fee waiver status. So once you bubble that in or check that off in the registration portal, uh, then essentially that that price for the student we zero it out when you have the remittance at the end. So that's it's pretty straightforward. Just bubble in that um, that box. Okay. Um, will proctors have the ability to pause in digital tests for a student that goes on breaks as needed? Adrian, did you want to respond? I was just going to say there are processes in place to support students who are who, who are testing who have break accommodations such as breaks as needed. Um, so uh, I don't want to go too far into detail on that because there, there's there's a lot of stuff that you know you would need to know about that, but it is possible to support students with breaks as needed doing the digital test. Okay, I want I did put up the slide with the Connecticut SAT School Day webpage. That is where we put all our resources. Right now, the the implementation guide that I mentioned earlier is posted there. The slides from this webinar will be posted there as well as the recording. Um, many of the documents that Deirdre referred to in her part of the presentation about supports um, for English learners, supports for your students um, with special in the special populations are posted there as well. And as we get more um, documents finalized, they'll be posted there, such as the manuals. Um, you will also receive paper copies, but the manuals get posted electronically first. Um, what specific documentation is needed to request extended time for Eng English learner students? I just I just submitted a response in the chat box, but I was going to say that for SSD online, you're not submitting, you don't need to submit any documentation for, for your English learners. Just want to make sure that there's documentation somewhere in the school's record that you know, the student does have, is an English learner and, and would benefit from this support. Keisha, did you want to add anything? Yes, I did just want to add a reminder. Um, unlike submitting accommodations in SSD online, um, you again, as Deirdre said, you would not have to provide documentation. But for the purpose of SAT school day, a student receiving an EL support of 50%, it is for one time use. So it will not continue to other exams as if a student was approved for a, through College Board SSD dashboard uh, based on a disability. So it's just something to be aware of. And there are cases, just so you know, and you probably do know this, where a student um, would be indicated as EL, but also has a documented disability, uh, possibly like a physical medical. So they could have breaks as needed, but also indicated as EL 50%. So there is a difference. Thank you. And um, we've gone a little bit beyond our time. And so out of respect for you and your time, um, we want to thank you. And thank you also to Deirdre, Keisha, Adrian, and Alan. And um, hope you have a great day. And please feel free to reach out to any to me or to Deirdre um, if you have any questions that we didn't answer. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.